This is me, the Under Viking, and this is Remember When. Remember When is a superhero slash supervillain themed party game in which three to nine players are going to take on the roles of uh, superheroes slash supervillains that unfortunately have had their minds wiped uh, and they are having trouble remembering their careers and they're trying to one up one another um, as, you know, trying to like you know, pretend that they were like maybe better or greater than they once were. Because their minds have been scrambled, they're trying to remember, you know, trying desperately to remember like how great or how infamous they were, uh, you know, in the case of superhero or villain. Uh, but as I said, they're not able to put everything together. So um, what happens is players are gonna have different cards that are going to be parts of those memories but they're going to rely upon the other players to, to fill the gaps of the memory with their cards themselves, and they're going to try to create the best possible memory, whether it is the, like, the one that makes the most sense, the one that is the most funny, um, the one that is the most ludicrous, or whatever. Uh, if players can, uh, players will hand cards to the other players, and they're going to try to like you know, guess what the other people are going to pick on those cards to choose from, because there's going to be four options on each card, and if they pick the right thing, they're going to earn points that way, plus, the person that is creating the memory, if their memory can be voted as the best memory of the game, they're going to you know, like win part of the game as well. There's two ways to win this game, um, both by accurately predicting uh, what the players are picking uh, when they like you hand them a card that they use, or just having the best possible memory when the game is over. So let me show you how Remember When is played. It's, it's a very colorful, very, very uh, um, exciting, I mean, just as far as like the, the theme, the, the, the way it looks and everything. Well, you'll see it here in just a second. It's, it's a lot of fun. But anyway, let's do it. All right, so these are different player boards and cards for Remember When. Uh, this big giant question mark here is the scoring track, and you can see the player pawns are here. I have set this up as a six-player game, but you can play this with up to nine players, uh, with a minimum of three. Uh, this is like the, the like, at the very beginning of the game, this will be the random memory uh, that you'll be using, and this is the the, the playmat that the cards will be placed on for the next memory that's being created. Um, when the memory that's created is voted on to be better than the memory that's here, you switch those cards out. So, like, the cards that were here will go up there, and then that will become the memory that you'll have to defeat in order to be the best memory. But that isn't the only way that you play the game as far as to win. All right, so you might have noticed that there are these set, these cards set up, and each of these are set to have the number four. Since it's the random memory, the person that is the first player is going to pick one, one two, three, or four, and then they're going to pick a card for each spot. You can notice that they're the exact same thing here, green, goes green, brown, purple, yellow, orange, blue, red, pink. And so you are only, so I just, I randomly said number four and I put these cards out. And so what it says is, uh, after finding a safe place to sleep, stuck in some barbed wire, come, um, I, there's a lie there, I completely scratched um, the scary musician because the life of a dragon rider requires sacrifice. Okay, so that, that, that memory, as I said, makes no sense whatsoever and like kind of fits the theme of the game as well. Remember, um, these are heroes that, that don't quite um, like have the perfect recollection of what has happened to them. So uh, now um, what happens is that each player is going to have a hand of these particular um, uh, memory cards and they're going to have those in front of them. Um, and But to begin with, what happens is the, the person who's uh, turn it is, what they're going to do is they're going to pick a number, one, two, three, or four, and they're going to then say, like, I'm going to say two. They're going to pick um, one of these red cards, and they're going to flip it over, and we're going to see, so, like, and the numbers, and this is, like, the thing. So it's, like, there's one mammoth, uh, my spouse, uh, asteroid, or toll booth is. So I picked two, so now I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to put that one there. So everybody sees that the thing that is going to be acted upon, like up here was a musician, but now it is my spouse. Now, in this situation, what I'm going to do as this player, I'm going to take two of these yellow cards, because the yellow cards are going to be the action that affects, I took too many, the action that affects the thing that is being affected. So just keep that in mind. So now I'm going to look at these, and I get to pick which one I want. And so I'm just, I mean, so like, you know, tormented or abandoned. Remember, you're trying to come up with a memory that, like, is going to be better uh, than the one that's over there. So 
you know, I kind of like that tormented one, you know, like, you know, it's tormented my spouse. Now, maybe I don't want to do that. Let's go with uh, scared, caught, polished, and polish your spouse. Uh, let's go with caught. So let's go caught their spouse. So then we put that one down there like so. Now, remember each of the other players, they have hand, like they have a, they have these particular colors. Now, you might have noticed there's an orange box. I'll talk about the orange box here in just a little bit. I'm also going to point out something else too. Each player is going to have these four uh, cards here. One, two, three, and four. They're going to move. Um, when you're voting on whether or not you think the memory is better than the one that was before it, you're going to say, like, the one and two are used for voting yes or no. But you don't do that first. Now what happens is, is that the other players are going to have, remember, they're going to have a pink card. They're going to have a, a blue card. They're going to have green. And, and this player is going to have them as well. And what's going to happen is, is that those players are going to say, um, they're going to look at the cards they have in their hand, and then they're going to yell out um, the, the, the color of the card that they want to give you. So somebody else like green, and like you know, and then they want to do it. Now, if there's any like ties as far as the different players, the, the active player gets to pick which one. But the like, first person says green, like hands them this. But when they hand them that card, they're going to also go through these particular cards, and they're going to pick one of these that is going to be like they're going to say, I think that person's going to pick. Um, the word number four on that. So like they're gonna look at this and like I don't know what this is, but here. So four is after checking my account balance. They're gonna say that, but like uh, as I buckled my seatbelt before my morning coffee, as I put my fears aside. Oh, and I should also mention. I apologize uh, if I forgot to. Um, after you place that, remember these are both heroes and villains. So you're actually going to pick that this person is a villain or a hero. So maybe we're saying we're a villain because um, you know, like they're they're caught your spouse. So um, like maybe like they said like before my morning coffee or whatever. But whatever reason they pick that, and if you pick the same number as the number that that person put down in front of them, like so, then they would get a point. And so like, you know, that was like, say the blue player, they'd get a point for, for picking the fact that you picked the same one that they did because they just had a gut check that they're gonna do that. And the way this works is that then um, the player that like, if like you submitted that or whatever, then the, if they took your card, then you, you get to draw another one to replace that in your hand. Now, the same thing happens with each of the remaining spots. Now, we have enough players in a six-player game. There is only five spots to fill. So, you know, in this situation, we are going to fill enough. But if you are playing, like, say we're playing a four-player game, and there's four spots to fill, but there would be a fifth one, then those would come from the active player. They would have to fill up that final spot. So let's just kind of go one by one and, and, and just see what we get here. So, like, let's say they hand me this one for the brown one. So before my morning coffee, let's see. Uh, at the hardware store, on the wings of the aeroplane, in the weapons depot, in a hazmat suit. I like in a hazmat suit. Uh, so, before my morning coffee, in a hazmat suit, I... And let's remember, this is going to be something caught. So let's go with this one. So, I justifiably, I casually, I respectfully, I, do, I justifiably, I justifiably caught the... Now we're going to go here. Uh, bedridden, cantankerous, uh, boring, solid. Uh, let's go with bedridden. That's kind of funny. Uh, just finally caught the bedridden spouse because... Let's go ahead and pick this one finally. Um, nothing else mattered. That's how I was brought up. He played knick-knack on my shoe or I wanted to rule the world. Ah, this one doesn't really go well. So, uh, nothing else mattered. You know, just, uh, like, who knows? Uh, you know, I don't like that. I'm gonna go with, because uh, that's how I was brought up. And so that would be um, the new memory. Obviously, like, some of these are gonna work better than ours, and we've had definitely ones that are, like, crazy cool. But, you know, this one, like, suitably vague, suitably odd, suitably weird, or whatever. And so then, uh, then after you put that memory together, like each of the other players are going to take either, and they're going to take a chance to either vote yes or no as to whether or not that is the new good memory. If that is the new good memory, then you are going to take these, get rid of these over here like so, and you're just going to replace them 
into the next spot. And now this would be the next good or the next like best memory that you're going to con contend with. And now you go in, like the next turn happens, and the next player is going to do the exact same thing. Everyone who gave up a card gets to replace the cards in their hand, so everybody's gonna have a full hand of cards, and then you are going to like dive in with the next step. Um, there's two ways uh, to win. Like you, you, you play a certain number of rounds. This once again a party game. It's kind of tough to, to determine. As long as you're having fun, just keep playing. And as I've said in lots of party games, it's not really about the winning. It's just about like having like you know a good time as you're picking this. But I'll talk a little bit more of that in my final in my final thoughts. But if you are going to determine a winner. One, the person whose memory is the one that is remaining and is the top memory at the end is going to uh, pull off the win. And the person who scores the most points on the track by actually correctly guessing which side of the different cards those players are going to use will also uh, be partial winners. So you could be like, you could win one or two ways and you could win both ways. And then, of course, you'd be uh, pretty amazing if you pull that off. Now, there are, as I said, these orange spots instead of the, you have these orange cards. And and so what that is, is it just slightly changes up um, what those things are. And if you play with more than six players, you, you like have to use these just because of the fact that you have more spots to fill. And so you, people are going to have these cards in their hand. But you can add them. Um, and then the player that is the active player gets to place these down as well. So you could say, um, uh, you, like, here, if you had this... Like, um, here is, like, uh, uh, George Washington. So then it would become, before my morning coffee in a hazmat suit, I justifiably caught George Washington's bedridden spouse because that's how I was brought up. And as you can tell, this kind of flows a little better when you add these purple, uh, not purple, these orange cards into the mix. And I think... Uh, once we added these in, we just played with them uh, regardless. We didn't ever, like, not use them, even if we didn't have more than six players. So, um, as I said, like, you, you can play the game for a certain number of rounds or a certain amount of time or what have you. Um, you can play it so each person gets to be the active player, like, you know, twice. And then you just determine who's got the best, uh, who came up with the best memory, uh, who, who came up with the funniest memory, who came up with the uh, most uh, ludicrous memory, who scored the most points, and then you just figure out who won the game. It is... Uh, it, it is it is exactly what I thought it would be. Um, it is both a combination of like a, a theme that I really like, uh, superheroes and supervillains, but also just like that creative aspect that I really really enjoy when it comes to a party game atmosphere. And a lot of times in those party games, like I just don't really like the theme; it doesn't connect with me. But in this case, it that totally was not well as I said the case. But um, let me talk a little bit more about that uh, in my final thoughts. All right, so that was Remember When. So, uh, as I said, party games, uh, just quick little thing about party games whenever I talk about them. Um, I don't play party games to win. I play party games to have fun. Uh, you know, like, there are certain party games that are more about, like, you know, getting from point A to point B. I mean, like, I technically Trio Pursuit is a party game, uh, but I still consider that to be more of a game. Um, there's lots of party games out there that are just this kind of thing. It's a narrative story. It's something that everybody works together to kind of come up with something that is funny, something that is interesting, something that um, makes us like think, you know, and, and they don't have to be funny. They can just be a provocative type game. They can also be games that just like, I remember the old game Scruples, where it was like, it, it, it was uh, a game that got everybody to kind of like discuss um, like, you know, social mores and things like that. But regardless, Remember When is a game that is, you know, in my mind, it is very lighthearted and it is an attempt to just force players to be clever, but also force players to kind of read the other person's mind and see what they're coming up with. It also is a thing where you're just going to be jamming different things together and coming up with something pretty ridiculous as far as, uh, like, the different memories that you're coming up with. And then um, when I played this with my kids, uh, my, my son and my daughter just giggled themselves crazy uh like, with, with coming up with different uh things i remember uh, like even they would they took the game afterwards and just kind of made the thing themselves and they were like oh what's the craziest story we can come up with this time and they would go through the whole thing and they had a blast with it and i i think like i i, I made my game group actually play with my kids because of the fact that a lot of times when we have a game group um like serious gamers right they can't let themselves just relax and just enjoy a game for it's like jokey merits or whatever but you have to throw a couple of of younger kids in the mix and they're just like giggling up a storm um you know it lets down those those barriers a little bit and it allows people to just say you know what i'm not going to care about winning or losing here i'm just going to care about having a good time and 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 trying to like you know just be funny and and just enjoy the moment 
So um, if you the best thing about this for me is that there's a lot of these different games out there that have aspects like this Remember One has, but they have themes that I just don't connect with. Uh, I just, you know, it's like one of those things where it's like I just don't really much care for like the, the ones that are just purposely... Um, uh, 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 tawdry, if you will. Uh, I mean, not that I'm like a prude or anything like that, but I just, you know, it's like one of those things where it's like, oh, we're just kind of being, you know, incredibly inappropriate for just inappropriateness sake. You know, I, I, I that's just not my, my game. I don't really get that. Uh, I, I find that games like this that like, you know, kind of make, um, like uh, the the Monty Python esque silliness of situations, uh, like is 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 way more enjoyable uh, to me uh, than any any sort of like yo hey let's just see how many dirty words we can put together and 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 then you know just be you know it's just it's 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 like watching stand up comedians where like you know the, the guy that's dropping an f bomb every third word or the person that actually just makes you think and actually like you know puts a spin on things in a way that just kind of. Uh, uh, makes uh, things funny because they are funny, not because you're just being gross, <laughs> if you will. But anyway, regardless, if you're looking for something like that, if you're looking for a good party game that has a superhero theme, I strongly suggest picking this up. I, I think you really, really enjoy it. Um, if you have any questions about it, by all means, ask away. I'll be happy to answer those as best as I can. As always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, I am the Undead Viking. I think you're an awesome human being. Please continue to be that awesome human being. I'll do my best to do the same. Until next time.